Hello, it is August 1st, 2022, and this is Thoughts from the Word. Well, hello and welcome back to Thoughts from the Word. Change of setting. Today's the first day of our sports camp here. Uh, the greatest two weeks of the summer, even though ours is only one week. Uh, but we've got kids running through the building and whatnot, and so I've moved from my home office to um, the church office in order to be available. Uh, but today I want us to talk about uh, praising God and blessing God. Sometimes as we go through our, our day, our life, our week, uh, we just don't feel worthy. You know, something happens, we get angry, we get frustrated, we, we struggle with a sin or whatnot, and we wonder, how can I praise God? David uh, was writing uh, this psalm as Abimelech uh, was chasing him, drove him out. And David was feeling very unworthy because he realized that it was his own sin, his own failing and falling that had led to this point where uh, his own son was seeking his life. And he, he writes this psalm and he begins it this way. If you have your Bibles, turn to the book of Psalms, chapter 34. Psalm 34, we begin the, the chapter with this verse. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall, shall continually be in my mouth. What we can see and learn from David is it doesn't matter what's going on in our life. It doesn't matter the struggles we're going through. It doesn't matter the pain we're feeling. At all times, we are to bless God and shall bless the Lord. Now, note he doesn't he doesn't say it in a way that you have to. He says it in a, in the in a way of this is what he wants to do. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Speaking of the attitude of his own heart, that he will focus his heart, his eyes, his his life upon the Lord, and offer him the praise and honor and glory that he is due, despite whatever else is going on. I know in my own life, it's hard sometimes to do that. Things come in, stressors come in, and I get focused on the stress. I get focused on the trial. I get focused on, on what's going on, and I lose sight of God. David reminds us that even in those worst of times, that's when we really need to be turning to him. And so we turn our eyes in, in faith to him, and we bless him, and we praise him at all times. So as you're going through the day today, and some task, something comes up that adds stress to your life and you're, you're frustrated, you want to grumble and gripe, don't. Instead, turn to the Lord and bless Him. William Cooper, in uh, the book Puritan Sermons from 1659 to 1689, in a sermon he preached, he said this, Can a child of God in any sense give thanks for sin? No, not properly, because one, sin is detestable. Ezekiel 5.11, and accursed, Galatians 3.10. Uh, Secondly, since we, may not, so, since we may not sin that grace may abound, nor do evil that good may come, Romans 6.1 and 3.8, so sin cannot be the ground of thanksgiving, since it is contrary to the honor, image, and will of God. Thirdly, sin is not by God's making. It is a plague and the subject of sorrow and shame. Nevertheless, Improperly, occasionally, and consequently, as men speak, sin is a ground for thanksgiving. How? Because the Lord, by his unlimited power, can so master sin, and by his infinitely wise providence, permit, dispose of, and bind sin, and by his free grace, pardon sin. Yea, he can make grace superabound where sin did abound, calling light out of darkness and making great sinners to become great saints. Out of sin, God can lay a foundation for infinite glory to himself. Pilate, Judas, and the Jews are not to be praised for their treachery against Christ, although they did fulfill and execute God's decrees in these events. No man must thank sin or blame God for sin, even though he extracted the antidote out of this viper. Since the Lord demonstrates his glory in overruling and pardoning sin to the salvation of poor sinners, there is good reason to magnify him to the highest. Since we have dishonored God very much by our sin, it is important that we now adore him for his grace 
in, a fetch, in fetching a pearl out of the, this dunghill and set off his glory. Thankfulness is pleasing to God, not only in good days, but in bad. This is the best sacrifice and gift we can offer to God. Mr. Bradford, a martyr, speaking of Queen Mary at whose hand he lay, said, If she releases, imprisons, or burns me, I will thank her. Let God do with me as he wills. I will be thankful. Think of that. As you were preparing to be a martyr, thanking the person that may martyr you. It's hard for me to imagine. And yet so many in history have done so for, for God's glory. May I set my eyes upon God today and give him the glory and praise and honor. May I bless him even when my mind and my heart is saying I've got nothing to offer. May I bless him for his glory. Let me close us with prayer. Father, we thank you for the grace and the mercy that you show us each day. We thank you for the privilege we have of serving you and for the opportunity we have to bless your name. Oh, Lord, we thank you for the trials we have, for they point us to you. May we take those trials and use them for the glory of Jesus Christ. Give us your strength, your wisdom, and your guidance today and be glorified in us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Well, thank you for being with me today. I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow as we gather together for some thoughts from the Word.